Sabbath service, New Earth Restoration Sabbath service here. And we are so happy uh, to have all of you here today uh, for the Sabbath. The Sabbath is a Mikra Kodesh. It is a time where we devote ourselves to thinking upon our master and all of his benefits that he has done for us. We put aside the cares and the desires of the world, and we focus solely on him together as we strive to learn and, and uh, worship him together. The New Earth Restoration of providing a platform for that. This morning, uh, we are going to look at a scripture in the book of Psalms, and this is in Psalms 20, and we'll start here in verse 4. Grant thee according to thine own heart, and fulfill all thy counsel. We will rejoice in your salvation, and in the name of our Elohim, we will set up our banners. Yahweh, fulfill all your petitions. Now know I that Yahweh saves his anointed. He will hear him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses. But we will remember the name of Yahweh, our Elohim. And so uh, we will remember the name of Yahweh, our Elohim, uh, today and continuing. And so this morning we have a wonderful service. We have Brother Sufron, I believe, is going to be preaching. I think that's the note that I got. And so uh, we're going to have our short uh, liturgy and a time of prayer and, and good time of fellowship together. So uh, let's open with prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for every soul that's here. We thank you for your word going forth, going forth into the nations. Father, we pray that you would draw the hearts, that you would open the minds of those who are closed, and that you would open them to see your glorious truth, namely your son, Yeshua Messiah, but also the relevance of your Torah and the path to righteousness, that they might turn from their crooked ways and make straight the paths for you in their lives. And so, Father, we ask you to bless the service and just give us a good time of shalom in Yeshua's name. Amen. Eisen? We hear the meditation. Is not this the fast that I choose to loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the straps of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house? When you see the naked to cover him and not to hide yourself from your own flesh? Then shall your light break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up speedily. Your righteousness shall go before you. The radiance of Yahweh shall be your rear guard. We bless Messiah. Blessed are you, Yahweh our Elohim, sovereign of the universe. Who has given us the way of escape in Messiah Yeshua. Amen. So with joy, we draw living water from the springs of deliverance. We bless each other. On that day, Jacob blessed his grandchildren. He said, in time to come, the people of Israel will use you as a blessing. They will say, may Elohim make you like Ephraim and Manasseh. May Elohim make you like Ephraim and Manasseh. May Elohim make you like Sarah, Rivka, Raquel, and Leah. May Elohim make you like Sarah, Rivka, Raquel, and Leah. May Elohim bless you and watch over you. May Elohim shine his face towards you and show you favor. May Elohim be favorably disposed toward you and grant you peace. We enter the Kadosh. How lovely are your tents, O Yaakov, your dwelling places, Yisrael. 
through your abundant favor, we will enter your home. In awe, we will bow down within your Kadosh Kadoshim. We love the home you live in and the place where your radiance resides. We will fall and bow, bending the knee before Yahweh, our maker. May our prayers to you be at the appropriate time. And your abundant righteousness answers with the truth of your rescue. We favor kin and Talmudim. May it be your will, Yahweh our Elohim, and Elohim of our foreparents, that you show favor to us and all our friends and relations, and that you grant us and all in Israel a good and long life, that you remember us with good thoughts and blessings, that you consider us with your salvation and your compassion, that you bless us with great gifts and favors, that you make our households complete, that you cause your presence to dwell among us at all times. Privilege us to train up our youth, proselytes, disciples, and all Talmudim in wisdom, understanding, in loving and revering Yahweh, in belonging to Yeshua, the Anointed One, and being committed to Him. Let them be people of truth, kadosh for Yahweh, to illuminate the world with Torah and Tav Mitzvot, doing all in the service of Yahweh. Hear our supplication right now and give us the same favor as our spiritual mothers and fathers cause our light to shine as a reflection of your face for all ages, so that all Israel might be saved. Amen. We recite the Shema. Hear, O Israel, Yahweh is our Elohim, Yahweh is one. Blessed is the name of his esteemed kingdom forever. And you will love Yahweh your Elohim with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And you will love your neighbor as yourself. Let these words be upon your heart. You will teach them diligently to your children and speak of them when you sit in your house, when you walk upon the path, when you retire and when you arise. And you will bind them for a sign upon your hand and let them be frontlets between your eyes, and you will write them on the doors and gates of your house, and you will love your neighbor as yourself. We give thanks and praise. Okay, uh, so at this time, uh, we have the prayer request time. Uh, and uh, or uh, someone wishes to uh, uh, read a psalm or anything like that. This is basically the time of the uh, service um, where we do that. We give thanks and praise. And so um, if you have a uh, prayer request that you would like us to, uh, you know, petition for you uh, today, uh, put your... Uh, um, put it down in the uh, text box, if you can, please. Um, and uh, we will uh, uh, petition for you on behalf, uh, on your behalf, uh, as together as a Yahad. Uh, we do have a prayer request here. Bob is not feeling well, something intestinal. Okay, Donna, we'll pray for Bob. Uh, that the Father would touch him. Uh, anything else we have this morning? I have a praise report. Okay, go ahead, Valerie. Well, um, two years ago, I found out that we were reading the word on 714 every year at the courthouse. So I participated two years ago just as a, you know, participant. And then the one that was in charge had to move. So um, they asked if I would be in charge. Well, that first year we had four people. And then last year we had four people. So I kept putting it out on Facebook. And um, I'm so thankful because the father almost tripled 
how many we had. We had 11 people this year, and there were four people that were willing to read. And in Georgia, we have 159 counties, and every county participated. So I'm so thankful that for that. Wow. Yeah, yeah, ministry um, ministry opportunities have expanded. The Father has expanded that uh, for you. Uh, and as you, you've seen that uh, in various ways. So we thank you for that report, Valerie. Uh, Brother Emerson, we also see this note you have uh, that we'll pray for wisdom on helping you to deal with your daughter. Um, you know, uh, children... Um, uh, they can be a challenge. Uh, they're a blessing from the Father above. The Bible tells us they're a blessing, but uh, also there's a challenge, too. I think as fathers, uh, especially in this world today, very difficult to navigate the choppy, the choppy waters of all of the unrighteousness that's swirling around us, uh, you know, and our children uh, are susceptible. Uh, so we need to pray for them, pray that the Father will, will help them. We have one for uh, Brother Finney. Uh, he says here, uh, let's see here, it says, uh, I have a prayer request next Shabbat. I will miss our Shabbat service because I will be at Miraguan in our congregation Yihad that we have in Haiti. We will have seven sisters to get baptized. Okay, he'll be there with his dad uh, and pray that the father will protect them during the road. It's the very dangerous, a lot of bandits and uh, mal malefactors looking to do evil in Haiti. But, you know, we have a mighty Elohim and he has mighty angels to shield us in protection. So we're going to pray for um, protection for Brother uh, Binet. Uh, and also that the blessing, the seven sisters baptized. Think about that. That's that's quite a work that's happening there in Haiti, Baruch Hashem. Uh, so... Uh, all right. Um, okay. Uh, so we have these prayer requests this morning uh, and also a praise report. Who would like to make petition? I don't know if uh, if uh, someone would like to make petition for these things. Anyone out there? Okay. How about you just agree with me then? You agree with me in prayer. The Bible says two or three of you shall agree as to touching anything and ask it in the name of Yeshua Messiah. Uh, it shall be done for you. It shall be done for you. Have faith. Remember that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. The substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. And our Heavenly Father has guided men of faith all the way back to Abraham. Abraham was a man of faith. He obeyed our Heavenly Father based upon a promise that was given to him. And we also today can obey our Heavenly Father based upon the individual promises, but also the corporate promises to his people. And so let's come uh, in prayer uh, together and we'll then agree for these things. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you because we know you are good. And in you is no darkness at all. And Father, we can come boldly to the throne of grace and present our requests in our time of need. And Father, right now is a time of need for many people. Father, we ask and petition for your angel to be sent to Bob. He's dealing with intestinal problems. Yahweh Rapha, heal, heal, Master Yah. And Father, we also ask that you would send your angel of wisdom, Brother Emerson, and to intercede in this situation. Give him wisdom on dealing with his daughter. Help his daughter to see and may her mind's her, the, the clouds of her mind and her heart be open, that she might listen to her father, Brother Emerson. Father, we also want to thank you for the ministry opportunity that Valerie has encountered. Father, I pray that you would bless this and multiply it more and more. 
Multiply it, Father, for the glory of your kingdom. And Father, well, now we also pray for the Haiti mission. Father, a great work is being done there. Seven sisters to be baptized, but there is a difficult road to get there. And Father, we ask right now that your mighty angel of protection would not only go before Brother Finay and prepare the way, but would shore up behind and be a rear guard, protect them as they travel, clear out the elements of evil, make straight the paths, the way of our master as they minister in your house. Father, we pray for the speaker today. We pray for the ministry that's going out across cyberspace. If there are any who need to come and repent or learn the way of righteousness, draw them to the Yahad. And help us as able ministers in whatever field we are in to work in your kingdom to bring in the harvest. Help us in that endeavor, Father. We ask this now in the name of your blessed Son, Yeshua Messiah. Amen. Baruch Hashem. Heisen? We hear the word and testimony. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Yahweh, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Let the prophets prophesy. Okay, uh, so at this time, uh, do we have uh, his brother uh, Soufran here? Uh, Not seeing a brother Soufran right now. Uh, we might have to throw this out there and see who is prepared in season and out. Wow. Our, uh, our, our, our out-of-season guy, Brother Holsapple, is, is he here? Yes, he is our out of season guy. He's ready to go no matter what, as a good soldier and Messiah Yeshua. What about you, Brother Holstap? Well, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but have you got a word for us today? I got something. I'm ready. You know it, brother. I'm ready to go. <laughs> All right, brother. God bless you. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, shalom and welcome, everybody. Thank you for being here and thank. Praise Yahweh for being a part of this. You know that many times it's exactly that. In, in life, we come into problems and we come into things and we have many different battles. But we should be ready to always give an account, always give an account of what we believe and why we believe it. And even if the world doesn't like it, you know, there's a lot of times uh, you go places and people don't like your looks. They don't like what it is. But if you know that you're right with the creator, then that's what matters. So I just want to go over a few verses today. If I can get this to show up like it's supposed to, then hopefully we will work it out. Give me a second here, screen. All right, here we go. So what I'd like to go over is the blessings and cursing. So many times we're worried about our lives and what's happening in our lives and what's going on in our lives, which is fine. But I think we miss out on why these things happen to us and what is going on. And personally, we see some things going on when you travel, when you go to these hospitals, when you see these, sometimes, uh, what's that old adage? It's easier seeing someone else's problems than it is your own you know we don't have a lot of times what we see in the future but we do with the scriptures we actually do have those foreseeing moments a seer if you will if we believe the word of Yahweh if we go and do what it says so we know whether we like it or not you know and a lot of things he says his ways are not our ways the way we think is not the way he thinks so with all that being said, we know if we do 
what the blessings are, then we will get, we will reap the blessings. But if we do the cursings, then we're going to reap the cursing. It's it's that simple, that easy. But so many times we kind of want to twist and turn and make it, you know, if I, I can get away with this or if my family can do this. And we want to try to make it a different, broader path for others or for family members. Uh, my aunt, longtime Pentecostal pastor's wife, 40 years, for those 40 years, she has said it's Acts 2.38. It's only Acts 2.38. It's only Acts 2.38. And then her brother has a disease and has a problem, and he's getting ready to pass. And she says, oh, if he would just say the sinner's prayer. People are falling about. What's going on? <laughs> we just changed our whole road, our whole and I'm not trying to be hurtful or mean. I'm just saying that's sometimes what we see, even in religion and, and different ways that when somebody comes to the path, we want to make it as easy and simple for them. But we have to remember Yeshua died on that stake and why he died there was so we could make it. There's not a problem with that whatsoever. But the problem is, is it's what his word says. And we have those blessings and cursings throughout our lives. And if I would have known this personally, years back, I don't think I'd have all the problems that I've had to deal with, you know. So knowing these is knowing, I think, so much. It helps exactly our life and moving forward. With all that saying, Deuteronomy 28 and 1, and if you faithfully obey the voice of Yahweh, your Elohim, and notice faithfully, we talk about faith, sometimes you know, I think we misunderstand or mislook or misplaced, if you will, that faith. Faithfully is knowing if I do this, if I go down here, just like sister was saying, if I go to this abortion clinic, even if I'm by myself, even if there's only two or three there, if I go there and profess, then it is an opposition. The kingdom is at work. I think we miss out because there's so many little numbers, you know, there's not a crowd. Usually when we're doing the right thing, you don't see a million man march. You don't see a hundred thousand. You don't see a lot of time, 10, 20 people. You know, for me personally, I go to Arkansas and there's 30 to 50 people there. I'm like, praise Yahweh. This, you know, this is an overload. This is awesome. All the different people that would show up in the middle of the woods to hear the word of Yahweh. So that faith being placed correctly means so much in this too, that even though we may not believe it, so to speak, you know, even though we we kind of got our own ideas on how things work, but it doesn't always work out that way in life. If we really truly look at what goes on, I might say, well, because I'm wearing the seat seats, I believe this. And that may not be having to do with anything. What it really has to do is the commandments and that I should keep the commandments. Now, one day somebody, and they have, will pull on them and be healed. We'll have that attribute of that faith. So there's there's so much in this one verse. I could probably go on for an hour on this, but I'll keep going for time's sake. Faithfully obey the voice of Yahweh, your Elohim. And this is also the voice, the commandments, and the ruach, they both go together. We try to, or some try to separate that, but they're one in one. He is a cod. Yahweh is a cod. There is no other. So the, the thing that we have to learn here, we have to go forth with, is obeying his voice in the command. And when the ruach says that sister over there has a problem, go talk with her, go speak with her. I can say, I'm having a terrible day. I got this. And I can talk myself out of that faithful word I just heard. And I can go live my life the way I want to. But knowing is that a curse I just brought up on myself. See, there's, when we get to the infinite, if you will, when we get to the really small micro-isms, the cell part of the being of Yahweh, the Godhead, as a lot of people say, right? The, the Ruach, Yahweh, it all works together. So knowing if I'm following that, I am doing the right thing. 
And knowing if I listen and I take 30 seconds or a minute out of my time, which is his time anyway, if I'm bought by price and I'm a living sacrifice, then I know truly I'm on borrowed time. I was a dead man for the sins I committed years back. I was a dead man. I deserve, right? So when we take it personal for all these mishaps and all these things that we call sin, when we do that correctly, we understand why Yeshua had to come and why. And then instead of it being what a lot of people turn it into, instead of it being we're deserving, we're not deserving. We're really not, you know, we're not deserving that he would come and give his life for continually just mistake after mistake after mistake. A good papa will correct that. You know, if you if your son says, if your daughter says, I'm just going to go outside and, and run around the house and kick everything in sight and cats go flying and the birds kicked out of the cage, you're going to have a problem with that. And the same thing we see in this life that we have been given, we've been granted that we are supposed to follow his ways, his works, and then we get those blessings. And we know in doing this, that faith is moving forward. We're doing the right thing. So being careful to do all his commandments that I command you today, that Yahweh your Elohim will set you high above all the nations of the earth. This, we seem to think, happens tomorrow. Right, I know people that's trying to establish a church in Kentucky. I know people that's trying to establish them. They want a revival. They want this. They want it. And they want it now. And they think tomorrow they're going to be the biggest ministry on this earth. But that's not going to happen because that ain't the way it happens. And you have to learn. And from what I found, it's a long road to learning. We think, I think, I'll make it personal. I think, you know, I know a lot. But going back 20 years, I thought I knew more then than I know now. And I acted as such, right? A lot of those prideful thoughts, a lot of those terrible things, a lot of those things, we have to look over our own self and say, Yahweh, forgive me. Forgive me for what I've done. Forgive me and suffer. Sometimes I've had to pray, literally pray while talking to certain people because my anger and my inside is just like i can't believe i'm hearing this face to face now not over keyboard i'm talking face to face people telling me to my face what they thought of me what they thought my everything was and to be able to contain that as to once the soldier would have said hey let's go outside let's go behind the fence and we will settle all this right but the soldier of yahweh is a different person a different mind-mannered person. Not to say we're not a David. Not to say we won't chop the giant's head off. Don't get me wrong, right? That we still have the sword, the word of Yahweh. But he fights our battles. He does more than we could do. And what he's trying to do is make us repent, right? He's trying to bring us to, hey, that wasn't right. Hey, this isn't right. Hey, what you're doing. And through this thing called life, we find out when I was 16, I wasn't the smartest man on the earth. Go figure, right? Who would have known? At 18 in Desert Storm, and, and I wasn't the invincible person. But guess what? Faith was always in Elohim, right? The faith was always there. The invincibility wasn't in person, or I probably would have got shot up. The invincibility was in what I carried, the Bible in my pocket. And it was the New Testament. I didn't have a pocket big enough to put the whole Torah in there, right? But the faith of that word and in the creator was there, even though it wasn't, you know, used responsibly, used correctly. I didn't know these things, so therefore I used what I had. But as we go forward, we use everything that we have, and that's what this is all about, right? That's why we're here. We're here to praise Yahweh, to keep the Sabbath to do the things we know to do, and to learn those things that we don't know to do. And we are still learning. We're ever, ever learning. And I think that's another thing that we are learning as we go. When we come to a lot of religion, I will say, we're saved. It's over. 
there's nothing better we can do and all that. But when we learn, this is pleasing the Father. This ain't just, I'm saved, I can go have cake and, and do what I want to do. It's, he has sent Yeshua. So what can I do for you? What's that old, uh, what was it? What have you done for me lately? You know, what have you done for me today? And I believe in some aspects, we should look at our life that way. What can I do for the Father today? What message can I send to the world? What can I do? And it's not always a loving message. It's not always people are going to pat you on the back and say, man, that's that's lovely. Some people are going to say the opposite. They're going to find, and but that's not what it's about. It's not for us to even look at it in that aspect. It's I'm delivering the message of Yahweh. I'm, I'm the mere servant, the messenger of Yahweh. That's all. And I think we lose a lot in that too, that, you know, we get this title or that title and we're, we get puffed up. And it can happen because especially when we don't have the things in place, when we don't have elders in place, when we don't have Dr. Jackson, when we don't have Brother Jackson, when we don't have Professor, when we don't have people to say, hey, that's getting out of line. And sometimes you have to put your perspective in as well, right? We're men. We're women. We can see clearly again, and the Ruach shows all. Everything done in darkness will be brought to light. Everything that happens here and there is going to be brought forth. And therefore, the blessings and cursings are going to be. Let me keep going. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. This is what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> this is where I'm trying to get all these blessings. I ain't got to pray for him. I ain't got to beg for him. I ain't got to be out there crying on my face at night and weeping. These blessings are going to overtake me. And I think that's where we need to be. I think that's the kind of life we should be searching for. Instead of I'm continuing sin, I'm always fighting with sin, I always got a problem with sin. That no, we want to be overtook. Instead of now, we all sin right? Scriptures is clear about that. And I've met people that say they don't sin, you know, they don't sin and they don't, I've met all, you know, when you get around, you get around, you hear all kinds of things. And about the time I think I've heard it all, there's something else that comes around. It's like, wow, how did that become a thing? And then there's usually somebody else who would agree with it. And it's like, how would that be a thing? But regardless, you know, there's nothing new under the sun, but all these things keep coming out because it's trying to do what? What's the whole purpose of the enemy in the first place? If we know our enemy, then that's half the battle, if not 90% of it. The enemy's coming to separate us. The enemy's coming to destroy us. The enemy's coming to make us sick. The enemy's coming to put a wedge between us because if two or three are gathered in my name, Yahweh's going to be there. So what's the enemy trying to do? He's trying to separate two or three. Two or three, that's amenable. You know, we're talking how many people? 20, 30, uh, you know, 14 here right now, right? And how many listening? How many online? How many watch this on YouTube or on Facebook Live? And how many people are here right now? So essentially, what I'm trying to get at is, 14 people can petition Yahweh, 15, right? <laughs> Keep on going. But 15 people can petition Yahweh. And out of that, according to the word, your prayers will be answered, right? We pray and we ask the Father for these healings. We pray and we ask the Father for your healing. We don't have to know you. We don't have to be there. All we have to do is say, Father, Brother Emerson has a problem. And Father, you see it, you know more than I could possibly do with that problem. You know more than what we can fathom with that problem. So all we're asking is you have shalom there, that you bless him, that you give him what he asked for. And according to these verses, if we're not continually in the pig sin and, and rolling in it, then according to these verses, he will answer us. He says what? You have not because you ask not. Now, me personally, that's a big thing. I can pray for anybody. I'll go anywhere. 
uh, and pray for them. A lot of that I don't put on Facebook. I don't put on YouTube. I don't put that street preaching out because some of these people probably don't want to be on there. You know, I don't think that uh, Ron, I mean, Ron is one he would because he plays a guitar and he would probably love to be on there. But most of these people do not want to be on the street and professing, look, I'm on the street. They have families, they have children, they have, you know, moms and dads, some of them, brothers and sisters. And to portray them in such a, a light, I don't think that personally, I don't think it's right. Now, one day, like I said, if Ron comes up with his guitar and goes to play and we may do something like that. But I'm trying to put my treasures in heaven. I'm not trying to be the YouTube star and, and get the things. I want them to be healed. I want their prayers to be answered. I don't want to hinder that. I want them to have these blessings and know these blessings. So that's where a lot of times we're looking to the Father. Let me go on. If you obey the voice of Yahweh, your Elohim, blessed you shall be in the city and blessed you shall be in the field. There's a lot of people, and we hear this as of late, that I'm blessed and highly favored. And some of these are questionable. And I'm not, again, I'm not trying to be mean, but when you see certain people in certain places saying these things, it's like, well, blessings and cursings you know you got to know the difference a blessing is a blessing a cursing is a cursing and to call a cursing a blessing not not so right you know some of these things that we get ourselves into even though that yahweh may turn that into a, a way of light he might turn that into you know we know what the scripture says that what the enemy has brought forth is evil he might turn that around for us but for him to turn that around for us, we have to be following the creator. We have to have that shalom. And we have to keep it even in our darkest days, in our darkest times. You know, when you sit in these hospitals, when you sit around and you see these people, you know, your heart breaks, or it should. My heart breaks. We just went uh, to Jackson, Mississippi the other day, sat there all day, basically. And some guy was sitting in there, and he was just horrific. He, you could see it all over him. He went to, uh, you know, cursing and having problems and all kinds of things. And, you know, I just said, Shalom, you know, Shalom. That, that's It's nobody in here wants to be here, obviously. You know, nobody wants to be at the doctor's office in the hospital I don't think anybody, unless you're going for a good news checkup or you're going to hear, uh, you know, something good, I don't think a lot of people like to be there. So that professing, instead of getting argumentative and trying to fight and I'm saying terrible things, just sometimes state the obvious, you know, do you need prayer? Do you need, and sometimes that melts people's heart because what's really wrong with them? is they are there and they're scared and they're upset and they don't know if they're going to die or not and they don't know if they're going to make it or not. But we as the light of the world, you know, a lot of times we're in the same boat, right? We're kind of in the same. We all know what's going to happen. We all know the ending and how this ending is going to turn out. But the problem with this ending shouldn't be a problem. Oh, death, where does I sting? You know, many times I thought I was going to die. I thought I was going to die at 18. I thought I was going to die at about 27. There's a lot of times I really thought, this is it. 3.30 in the morning, you know, I, I need old enough to drink a beer. That's my thought. That's my, the mentality. Think of what you think at 18 years old. That was my thought pattern. So it shows my state of mind and, you know, of what I was even thinking. But at 18, I thought I was going to die before the sun came up. And that was the thought that came through my head. Not let's pray. Hey, maybe I should get it right. Maybe I should do a little repentance. No, I'm thinking whatever, right? Well, that's a fun way to go. That's a, you know. So in our thinking, again, reiterating that our thinking is not the ways of Yahweh. And so many times I think we miss so much that we don't even know how to pray right. The right 
profound thing to do at that point would have been praying and petitioning the father that, hey, if that's going to happen, bring me home, right? <laughs> Make sure that I can come in. I want to get rid of my sins. Instead, it's almost the opposite. It, it's almost amazing of how our thought process can be. Going on, blessed shall be the fruit of your womb and the fruit of your ground and the fruit of your cattle, the increase of your herds and the young of your flock. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bow. Now, many times we teach our kids the Torah. We teach our kids what the Bible says. We teach our kids the best of our knowledge of what they should do. And we try our best to raise them up the way we should. Now, that doesn't mean, and I've seen this many times, and I've, I've thought this myself, and I'm sure others have the same thought process, right? This does not mean that they have to follow. We know Yeshua had disciples, and we know Judas was one of them, right? Was there anything that he did not see? Was there anything that he did not I mean, what was his problem, right? I mean, for us to read that and to see and then to be betray the Messiah with a kiss for healing people, for feeding people, for raising the dead, for healing the woman, for, for all the things, for even correcting the Pharisees. My house, you made it a den of thieves. It shall be called a house of prayer for even correcting those, you know, but what do we see? So my point is, <clears throat> we can raise our children, and we can do the best of the best we can do. But we also have to understand that those same children have their choice. And what they choose to do is not always the right thing. But what we need to do in those times, instead of being so distraught, is stand on the word. The word says if you taught them when they get older. Sometimes we see these children go running off and doing some crazy things. But let us remind you, what did you do when you were younger? What was my thought process? For, for me to see my child act in certain ways and go completely the opposite of this, to me, is mind-boggling. Like, you should, because I knew, I hoped, I would hope and have faith that if I knew this. But that's just spitballing right that's saying if i knew this at that age i would have done different but would i or would i have been hey you know i'm coming back to that and i can come back to that i know he's there you know we we know the father's there so for some reason i think a lot of times we have so much faith and belief we can come back to him right we know he's merciful we know he's gracious we know he's gracious we know that he will accept us. There's no problem. I don't think anybody has a problem with that, right? I don't think anybody's like, oh, well, no, he just, you've done too much. You've done, you, you can't come in. I think we all agree that, yes, he, he's merciful, that he will grant you back in. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. He's knocking while we're running off the other way. He's standing there begging us to come and do the right thing. But I think a lot of times we miss that because, you know, we want them, we know, right? But look at the father. That's what I'm gleaning from that whole, you know, what's going on is look at the father and look what he looks down and sees. And sometimes, you know, I think, <laughs> I, I hate to say it, but I wonder if he just didn't shake his head and be like, oh my, you know, what are we doing down there? You know, look here, <laughs> you know, why? why would you do that? You know, we do it with our children, right? We see our children calls and says, hey, I got a ticket, didn't have my license. I was doing 72 and a 35. And it's like, have you lost your mind? Would you, what's, what comes to mind? Was you drinking? What did you, right? What was you doing that would, what thought process in your head would make that happen? What would chain of events would make that happen? But when we see these blessings and cursings, Sometimes we get way far out there on the edge of the limb, and then we say, well, why am I being cursed? Why am I being chastised? What, what did I do so wrong? But our thought process, getting to the end of that limb, 
wasn't probably as biblically as we thought it was, right? It may not have been on point as we wished it should be. Deuteronomy 30, 19. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore, choose life that you and your offspring may live. This is what we want for ourselves and for our children, right? This is the whole, one of the big concepts. But you notice it says choose. A lot of times we miss that because of whatever reason. But it clearly says to choose life. And for most of us, I believe, most believers, I think we get that. We we see the scriptures. We see what he says. Thou shalt not. Thou shalt. It's a pretty easy path. It's a pretty easy understanding. If I do this, I'll be blessed. If I do that, I'm going to get cursed. A lot of times, the world, not so much, right? The world is into whatever the world's doing. But the lost of the world will hear. And that's where I think that we enter the trenches and we realize we're looking for the lost. You might go through 10, 20, 30 people to find one. You might go through 100 people. You might go through a town. And in that whole town of Bay St. Louis, there might be one person there that even cares to hear the word. But that's the one. That's what Yeshua said, right? I'll leave the 99 to go for the one. That's the one, the 99 of them that are spitting on you and throwing things at you and, and egging you and, and all this are trying to steal your shalom. They're not the part of the body. And without us knowing this, we get upset. We we're, we think, well, what do we hear? The field is plenteous. We're, we're thinking these 99 should be, right? But not always those 99 is what we're we're searching out. We I think we just kind of get the concept wrong that the real true thing there before I get too far. The 99 are already there, right? The 99 are already in the assembly. So he's going after the one. So we're going to have to leave our comfort zone, right? If Yeshua said I'm going to leave these 99, these 99 are brothers and sisters. Hey brother, I'm going to call you up and and we can talk, hey, brother, but I'm going to have to leave Dr. Brother Jackson and go out in this world and get spit on and, and beat up because I have to, right? We love the fellowship. We love this. We love to come together. But knowing the concept of that is leaving that comfort zone and going out and fighting because he said what? The gates of hell should not prevail against it. They're not going to prevail against you as long as you don't choose to let it. You have to keep going and keep moving. And even when it seems like your friends, your kids, your and your cat hate you, <laughs> you still have to say, guess what? I'm going to keep moving. I'm going to have. But within that, don't get me wrong. Within these things, you have to be right with the greater. And you have to repent to the creator. And you have to say, what's that prayer? Forgive those who trespass against me and I forgive them. We have to live in a forgiving, forgiving, forgiving world. Can you imagine Messiah on the stake? And this guy's mocking and yapping and going, could you imagine the power that he could have just struck him by lightning, quick sand? I mean, he had every option in the world to do away with this guy, right? He, he could have done anything. He could have just poof, sand, disappear, quiet, right? Now think of that attitude and what we go through. Someone said this at the hospital, I think a couple of weeks ago. If Messiah did that for you, then what, you know, basically what, what can you say? What do you, what problem? He hung on that stake. So we could be saved for all those sins, for all those dumb thoughts, for all those things that we've done, I've done. He did that for me personally, and he did it for you as well. So if he did that, then for the little things we go through, this little thing called life, I mean, think of the blessings we've had. Think of the 
the many blessings and are yet to come. And this isn't a, you know, this ain't, it's over in five minutes. This ain't just one blessing happens and then close the cover. We're done. I got blessed. My life's, you know, it's said and done. I think we can all clearly see that those blessings are reoccurring. It's going forward. And the more that we're given, the more that we can do. The more that we push forward in this, the more those blessings become. But we don't take them as pride. We don't get prideful. We take them that the Father is pleasing. Therefore, I'm going to stay the course in what I'm doing because that's where the blessings are, right? If you find yourself in a good position, you don't quit that job. You're like, hey, <clears throat> this is a pretty good deal. I'm getting rightfully what I deserve, what I think I deserve. You don't say, oh, well, I made it. <laughs> I've got enough. That's about where I want to be. I'm par for the course. I'm just going to quit and go home. No, you stay in there and you try to be even promoted more, right? So why is it in life we try to be the best whatever we're doing, right? If we're the secretary, if we're the boss, if we're whomever, we try to do our best job at that, or we should, and then we get that blessing for it. The boss comes and tells us, you're doing a great job. Right, me in the military, whatever my job was, throw up the net, turn the generator on, grab the cable, run over, put the cam on net, come back, do it again, and very, very proficient in timely manner. And for that, I made a rank going to NTC, going to California in the desert. I could have said, like a lot of people, hey, it's the desert, it's hot, I'm gonna mobile you around. I'm going to take my time. I'm going to do it my way. You know, there's only me and a couple other guys here. We're just going to take our time. But for that, everyone's seen our proficiency and seen we was on a mission and we was trying to make ourselves, our section, not just me, our section, our FDC, Fire Control Center, to look very, very proficient, to look very, very professional, to say we are ready to do what we do. For that, I was promoted to E4 because, hey, you took charge, you did this, you did this, you did this. And you could have obviously said it's hot and not done it. So if I could get that there, then the blessings that Yahweh will provide to me for going and doing his work. But if anyone does not provide for his relatives and especially for the members of his household, he's denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Now, this is another one that if we're not careful, it gets twisted just a little bit. Because if you don't go out and weed your garden and get the, the grass and all the different things out, or maybe even have to put a pan up or a scarecrow, eat animals and birds out of it, you're not going to eat, right? You're not going to get anything out of that. So if you're not providing, if you're not helping, well, I would submit to that the same thing in our walk. If we're not doing anything for the kingdom, we're not doing nothing for the kingdom. Now, whatever aspect that is, is exactly what it is. But when we go to places, when we talk to people, when we get on and we say whatever we're professing, then we say, hey, come and join me. Come and join me. Come and join me. You know, come and join me. Come to the odd and join us, please. Come and find out. Oh, I don't know if I, I don't know. I don't know. Hey, all it is, and today's world, I mean, think about it. Here's the link. Here's the thing. You can pop on. You can be quiet. You can hide in the background. You ain't going to say a word. Ain't that amazing that you ain't even going to walk into this building and everybody's looking at you and being all, oh, my goodness. We have this great blessing and opportunity that people can come on and hear the word of Yahweh, can hear the anointing, can hear the liturgy, can hear all the things that we're doing, praise Yahweh, and they can take away from that and pray and have a relationship with Yahweh because of this amazing platform that we have here. Let's go on. I don't know where I'm at on time. I didn't look at it. Yamahu, thus saith Yahweh, cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength, whose heart turns away from Yahweh. 
again, when we trust in man, when we trust in things, but we can't take this too out of shape as well. Because if Yahweh has sent an anointed and appointed, if Yahweh says, Dr. Jackson, I want you to go tell that hard-headed person, he's just dead wrong. Now, that hard-headed person says, you know what, though? <clears throat> Let me tell you something, <laughs> right? And that whole attitude comes out. And that is who we are. Like it or not, we are who we are. We can change. We can choose to change. We can choose life. But a lot of times, sadly, that's why I love it here, because we do have checks and balances. We do have people, elders. We do have others, because <clears throat> five years ago, I was John Wayne, Clint Eastwood, and who could stop me? And if I watch my videos, if I hear my radio, if I hear that, I can hear that. And that kind of saddens me because I know I, I can hear it kind of just, uh, you know what I'm saying? Because I've grown. Now I try to humbly present what I would want to hear. And I'm growing in that. But because of the military, because of Pentecostals, because have you ever heard a Pentecostal preacher? If you haven't, then go listen to one, right? Go listen to some Rod Parsley or something like that. Because <clears throat> when they really start hitting it, that's that's being the best. That's doing what I did in the military. That's hitting the mark in their thing. So when you get proficient at that and you get a pat on the back for being that way, sometimes it's hard to come out of that. And sometimes it's hard to say, but you have to listen when the father and the Ruach says, did you hear yourself? And you're like, yeah, I, I kind of heard that. Was that pleasing? Was that, ooh, right? <laughs> when you hear yourself on the radio and it kind of gives you the cringes or you hear something from an old, old service, then, you know, the loving kindness, where's that out? What are we doing? And I'm, you know, not trying to condemn myself as well, but we grow. We're ever growing. I don't think the people that Yeshua said, come and follow me, was the same ones <clears throat> at the end of it, right? I don't think, especially when he come back, I don't think that they was the same people. And I think we see that clearly. Come and follow me. <clears throat> they, le they learned, excuse me. They learn from the Messiah. As well, we should. He is like a shrub in the desert and shall not see any good come. He shall dwell in the parched places of the wilderness in an unhabited salt land. Blessed is the man who trusts in Yahweh, whose trust is in Yahweh. Again, what are we doing? We're trusting in Yahweh. We're trusting in what he says, what he said he would do, and therefore he will do it because he said he would. That's our, you know. We have to have a faith, the grain of the mustard seed. In some of these instances, that's all you need. We're standing on the word of Yahweh. Yahweh said he will heal. Yahweh, Rapha, right? I will be your healer. All I have to do is say, Father, you said you would heal. Then I correct myself or correct what I find is wrong. The blessing says I shall be healed, right? This will not bring until death. No illness will bring you to death unless it's your time. If it's that appointed time, it's that appointed time, right? I'll finish up here. Blessed is the man who trusts in Yahweh, whose trust is in Yahweh. He is like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream and does not fear when he comes, for at least remains green. And is not anxious in the year of drought, for it does not cease to bear fruit. When all seems lost, don't lose faith. Don't lose hope. Don't give up. So many times I see people on uh, Facebook and social media, and I just give up. I can't take it no more. It's probably another block down the road. It's another couple minutes. It's one more dark night. That's all you have to endure. Don't give up. Don't quit. Don't dare quit, please, right? <laughs> you know, don't not give up the fight. 
because it could be that very next day the blessing's coming. And that's why the enemy is shoving so much upon to keep that from happening, to keep the blessing. The same thing with Job, you know. What does his wife say? Curse, curse him and die. What have you got to live for? But don't fall for that. Don't you dare let that happen. Keep pushing forward. Keep moving forward. Until next time, Yahweh's love. Keep the faith. Get the blessings. Steer clear of those cursings. May Yahweh bless you. Have a great and wonderful Shabbat. And thank you very much for listening. Yahweh's blessings. Shalom. Well, thank you very much, uh, Brother Wolf Sample, uh, for that message and uh, very uh, encouraging uh, for those who uh, seek after righteousness uh, in our Master. And so we'll just keep pushing forward uh, as we do at the Yahad, pushing forward. And, uh, you know, uh, the current of the world uh, is coming against us, but if we're moving upstream, even if slowly, we're still moving upstream. And our master can help us overcome the obstacles. So thank you again. Okay, uh, Heisen. We pray together. Our Father in the sky, may your name be sanctified. May your reign be blessed. Your will be done in sky and land. Continually give us our bread. Forgive us our sin debts as we forgive the debt of those who sin against us. Do not bring us into the net of a snare and protect us from the evil one. Amen. The Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the Torah. I pledge allegiance to the Torah. Of the kingdom of the beloved son. Of the kingdom of the beloved son. And to the divine theocracy for which it stands. And to the divine theocracy for which it stands. One Eloha, one nation, one head. One Eloha, one nation, one head. One faith, one attitude, one goal. One faith, one attitude, one goal. One baptism, one communion. One baptism, one communion. Ordained by Yahweh the Creator. Ordained by Yahweh the Creator. My nation is indivisible. My nation is indivisible. With divine liberty, equitable justice. With divine liberty, equitable justice. And eternal life for all. Amen. And eternal life for all. Amen. The leader blesses. Yahweh bless you and keep you. Yahweh make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Yahweh lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of Yeshua HaMoshiach, Prince of Peace. Amen. Okay, the service is finito. Thank you, everyone, uh, for joining in and for being with us this morning. Uh, very much appreciate it. And uh, it's encouraging uh, to see the brothers and sisters together in unity of faith. Uh, and thank you again, Brother Hosepel, uh, for the message. All right. Uh, I think, um, let's see, at some point we might, uh, if we do have the discussion, uh, are we planning to do the discussion portion today? Uh, Jackson, are you there? I'm here. It's your choice, my friend. Okay, well, I do have time uh, to, today. Um, I do have some time. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go to a, uh, a Shabbat service after this, but uh, it doesn't start till two, so I've got plenty of time. Uh, why don't we uh, um, turn the live part off? Uh, people might be more apt to, to uh, I mean, the uh, you know, the recording part off. Yeah, they might be more apt to share when the recording's off. That's what I find anyway.